Hello again. Welcome to Lightwave's modeler interface. Now again, I'm assuming that the people watching this have absolutely no experience with Lightwave. So again, let's begin talking about the very basics. So this is how a modeler looks once you launch it. It is equipped with four different panels, your top view, your back view, your right view, and your perspective window, like you have once layout is launched. And here's your orbit tool. You can see your grid. Each of these panels can be customized by hitting the D key to open up the display options panel. And this is also accessible in layout as well. Under viewports, you have top left, which is top, top right, perspective, bottom left, back, and bottom right is right. So let's say we wanted to change the uh, the grid in this. We don't want the grid at all. We can go to top right and uncheck show grid and it goes away. This is very useful once you have complex models and the grid is just getting in your way. But for now, we'll leave it on. If you go to layout, we can adjust the background color and I'm making it darker or brighter by right clicking and dragging. I like to keep it about a, a dark gray kind of bluish color. So once you have everything customized, X out of that. And again, you have all your tabs up here, which generate new tools on the left hand side. And you also have your standard file edit and help menu that is also inside of layout. The cool thing about modeler is that you can see everything is spelled out for you. So if you want to create a box, you go under the create tab, check the box tool, and you can simply hold the control key down to constrain to all axes and drill out a box in the top view, come down here in the back view, and drag up. While that box is still highlighted and you haven't dropped the tool yet, you can hit the N key to open up the numeric options panel. And in here, you can adjust the settings to get the exact look that you want. If we go up here to texture, you see that we have a lot of different settings. We can switch to textured wire, so now we can see the segments that we put into our box, as you can see right there. To drop this tool, let's say we're happy with that, you can either hit the enter key or spacebar. And now we have finalized our decision. Another useful feature is the F2 key. If you hit that, that will center your object at the origin. Down here, we have points, edges, and polygons. And it's very useful to get in the habit of um, being able to quickly switch between those when you're modeling, because it'll speed up your workflow. Points is Control G, the hotkey. Polygons is Control H. And you can also add a hotkey for edges if you would like. Uh, for me, it's a personal preference, but I just enjoy tapping the spacebar key, and it will go between points, edges, and polygons. Uh, you just have to remember which you're on when you're modeling if you do that, uh, because using the hotkey will obviously be a lot more accurate. So to modify this box while we're in polygons, you can see that if we actually click on them and don't let go, left click, and drag, we are then selecting polygons. And clearly you can see that we have four polygons selected, but you can also tell down here SEL stands for selection. We have four polygons selected. So we also have uh, translation tools like we do on layout. So if we wanted to move these polygons up, we could select move or tap the T key and simply move these polygons up. And then we can then we can begin modifying uh, this object and tweaking it to get it exactly how we want it to look. And again, to drop that tool, we can just hit the Enter key. Once you have a selection, you can either right click in any viewport, which draws out a lasso tool, and that will allow you to select or deselect polygons. But if you have some selected, you can also click on any blank area of modeler, and that will deselect it for you. So notice I'm clicking here, left click, and it will drop that selection. If you have one polygon selected and you want to select the entire object, 
you can hit the right bracket key and now you have your entire object selected. If you have one polygon selected and you would like to expand that selection, you can hold the shift key down and hit the right bracket key and you can see that it's expanding that selection or shift left bracket key to detract uh, the selection. And I'm just clicking in the blank area up there to drop the selection. If we want to uh, edit this object in a sub D mode, we can hit the tab key, which simply now turns it into an organic object. And you can get out of sub D mode by hitting the tab key again. Tab key works best with all quad polygons, which is a perfect square with four edges, or triangles, which is three edges, but it doesn't work well with an n-gon. An n-gon is any polygon that is over four edges, or four points. Let's drop that tool. Up here in the top right, you have your layers panel. So we can go into layer two, and we could draw out a ball, and drop the tool, hit F2 to center it. And we could put our first layer in the background by clicking on half of it. So you can see right there that the wireframe, the black wireframe, is the object in the background. It's very useful if you're like this to hit the apostrophe key, which will swap between layers. And you can see that the ball is now the black wireframe in the background layer and now the box is in the background layer. So again, surfacing. It's the same as in layout. Over here we have our surface editor. But to add a surface to this object, because right now it's a default surface. Everything in Modeler has a default surface if you do not assign it one. So let's select the polygon and write a bracket key to select all of it. And down here, you'll notice we have the Surface button, which is also uh, the hotkey of Q. And let's just call this Box. And we can set the initial color right here. Tap OK. And you can see that our box is now green. Under Surface Editor, we have our box right here under the surface name. And the default is the ball. You can add as many surfaces as you would like to an object by selecting one polygon, hitting the Q key go to box, poly, and assign it a different color, and tap OK. And you can see over under surface name, a new surface was generated. So you have a lot of control on how you can surface your objects in Modeler. Down here in the bottom right are a lot of very useful panels getting into more advanced topics, but basically they stand for weight maps, which is very useful for rigging, texture maps, for UVing, which allows you to place textures exactly where you want them on your objects, morph targets for um, creating facial animation, color maps, and selection sets. And we already talked about points, edges, and polygons. We also have symmetry mode. So you'll notice if we turn on symmetry and select this polygon here, the one on the left hand side is automatically selected. And if we modify this one on the left by hitting the T key and moving it out, you can see that the other one moves with it. This is very useful for modeling a character's face that's going to be perfectly symmetrical because you can model half of it and then you're basically done once you get that half finished. Let's drop out of that tool. We have the modes down here, which controls where your object is going to rotate from. If you have mouse selected, and we go hit Y for rotate and have our mouse down here. Oh, let's control Z that, which is undo, and get out of symmetry mode and rotate. You can see that our object is rotating from where our mouse is. If we go under modes and hit origin, our object will rotate around the origin. And selection will look pretty much the same as origin. Another useful hotkey is the rest on ground tool. So let's say we wanted to rest this object perfectly on the ground. Just tap F3, rest on ground of the Y axis, and tap OK. And now our object is perfectly on the ground. And you can see that we have our ball. Let's switch back to this. 
and you can see that um, right now this is just going to be layer one but we can go to windows layers panel and expand this down and we have layer two as our ball layer one as our weird box thing so let's double click on this and we can rename this layer to box and layer two to ball and that's just good organizational skills that you definitely want to have so those are basically all the main features that you would need to know of modeler to get started and from there you can just begin modeling and uh, getting more familiar with the tools and definitely start remembering the hotkeys because the sooner you do that uh, the faster your workflow will get and the quicker you'll be able to finish your models so again just have fun with it and be sure to check out the rest of the more advanced tutorials on this DVD and uh, I'll talk to you guys again soon.